Let's take a look at a few patients who have aortic regurgitation. This patient here on the top has a prolapse of the right coronary cusp. These patients often have a very eccentric jet which is pointed towards the anterior mitral valve leaflet. This shows you a patient who had endocarditis. You can still note the residual vegetation and thickening of the right coronary cusp. And the endocarditis caused destruction of the aortic valve and thereby regurgitation. Here we have a patient with a bicuspid valve. There are two cusps, one here and one here. These patients also have regurgitation very commonly as we will see in the next slide. And here on the bottom, a patient with rheumatic heart disease who has mitral stenosis and where the rheumatic heart disease also affected the aortic valve, thereby causing some degree of doming and thickening, and this leads to aortic regurgitation as well. Let's turn to bicuspid valves and aortic regurgitation. Again, here a patient who has only two cusps, a classic bicuspid aortic valve. We know that approximately 70% of patients with bicuspid valves also have aortic regurgitation. And the presence of aortic regurgitation is independent of the presence of aortic stenosis. We also know that the aortic regurgitation correlates with the aortic size. So the larger the aorta is, the more frequently will we see aortic regurgitation and usually the more severe it is. Patients with bicuspid valves also have eccentric jets very commonly. This is a finding that you will also see in patients with aortic regurgitation. Alone with two-dimensional imaging, we can actually see the closure defect of the aortic valve. This is a tricuspid valve where the free edges are thickened, but you will see that during diastole, there's a small defect here in the region of the aortic valve, which denotes the regurgitant orifice, actually. Another patient here who has a large aortic root and three cusps shows you a central closure defect during diastole. 